Welcome to Bennett's Bike Social Homeschooling. We are going to explain forks and we're going to bring it down to a level so your children will be able to understand how to set up forks. It's going to be that easy. Now when Mr Honda designs his CB500X or his Fireblade or his Africa Twin, he's designing that bike to fit a genre. So it's got to work off-road, it's got to work on-road, it's got to work with luggage, it's got to work with a pillion. In the case of a Fireblade, it's got to work on a racetrack, but it's also got to work over cobbles and around town because it is a road bike, it's not a race bike. So the suspension is set up for this wide kind of parameter of what it must be able to do and that varies depending on an adventure bike or a sports bike but if we start to ride this motorcycle slightly outside this parameter then we're going to have to change the suspension so if we take honda's cb1000r on a racetrack which it's more than capable of done we're getting towards the sporty end of what it's capable of doing and we may need to change the forks Again, if we're on a big bike like an Africa Twin and we're going off-road, again, we may need to change the forks. So let's look at what the forks do. Essentially, there's two different ways of looking at forks. Honda's Goldwing has a single monoshock and almost like a swinging arm on the front. So the single monoshock takes all the uh, compression and the rebound and the preload and acts like a spring on the front. Conventional forks, uh, are two forked legs going down to the front wheel and the front wheel spindle goes through the bottom of the fork legs. So we've got the forks in the bike and what we are essentially doing is controlling the front wheel movement of up and down. If we just put springs connecting the bike to the front wheel, we will have uh, support because we're supporting the chassis but the spring will bounce around freely like Zebedee at a disco. So it'll go everywhere. So what we need to do is control the fork and control the spring movement, which controls the body of the bike. Pretty straightforward so far. I'm glad you're still with me. Now the three terminologies you will have probably heard of is compression, rebound, and preload. So we're gonna explain those in very, very simple terms. So if you can imagine this is our fork leg, this is our front wheel spindle. Compression is simply when the fork dives. So this can be done by braking or when the front wheel spindle moves up when you go over a bump. This is compression. When we return from compression is rebound. So compression is controlling the fork going in, rebound is coming out. It's that simple. Now compression and rebound can be changed on some motorcycles. This is done sometimes electronically, like on Honda's Africa Twin or their Goldwing. Sometimes this is done manually. Now in a very, very simple way, all forks are slightly different, but essentially what we're doing is opening and closing valves. Now in the simplest way, if you think of a watering can with a lot of holes, and we pour water out the watering can, the water cascades down quite slowly. If we open up the holes and make those holes bigger and we pour the water out the watering can, the water comes out quicker. And that's essentially, in a very simplistic way, what we're doing with compression. So if we make the holes really, really, really small, when the fork compresses, it'll do it quite slowly. And if we open up the compression and make the holes bigger, as in the water will come out the watering can quicker, when we compress, the forks will go down quicker. Rebound is almost the opposite. So if the fork wants to come up really quickly, we open up rebound. And if we want the forks to come up slowly, then we slow down the rebound and close rebound. Okay, so it's open and close. If we want the forks to slow down on their movement of compression, we know we can close it. And if we want the rebound to come up quicker or slower, we know what we're doing. So now we know what compression and rebound does in the kind of water can diagram. So you want to change your suspension, that's fine. 
but this video is not going to tell you how to change your suspension because everybody watching this is a different size, rides a different bike of a different era and that video is far too complex. This is a very simple way. But what we can say is you have to be aware of that everything you do, you have to record and measure. So for example, if we want the rebound to come up really quickly, that might seem like a great idea, but then we could lose grip as we're cornering because the front end is coming back too quickly. If we want the rebound to be really slow, then the bike will stay in the stroke, as in it won't have chance to rebound when we hit the next bump. So everything has a positive and a negative. So when you're changing your suspension, just do it in small increments and only change one thing at once. It's a bit like making a chocolate cake and you have chocolate, egg, and you have flour. Obviously I'm not a chef. You have to just change one of these elements to change the taste of the cake. If you change all three and the cake improves in taste, you don't know which element has improved the cake. So just change one thing at once. And if it all goes completely wrong and you're not too sure what you're doing, you can go back to your base setting. Your base setting will be in your manual or you'll be able to contact your local dealer who'll be able to give you your base setting. And the final thing we need to look at is preload. Now inside the fork is a spring. What we are doing is condensing the spring with preload. When we add more preload, we are making the spring compress more, which gives the sensation that the front is stiffer. It's not. What we are doing is essentially just compressing the spring. So I'm glad you're kind of understanding front end. If you've got the opportunity, do play around with your suspension, especially if you're on track. But again, just do one thing at once and do small, small increments. If you're a little unsure, don't forget you can always go back to your base setting, which your dealer will have, or you can go see a specialist. All these companies will have riding facilities where you can actually go to them, they will change your bike, and you can ride back out again for a small amount.